Hey guys, it's Medicosis Perfectionalis, my rheumatology playlist. Today, let's talk about ESR and CRP and let's get started. This is what you are missing if you are not subscribed to my channel. All of these rheumatology videos you should never miss, especially the last one called Rheumatology Mastering the Labs. Repetition is the mother of pedagogy. No single blood test can confirm the diagnosis. The crucial question is, does the lab test correlate with the clinical picture? Whenever you see a patient with a rheumatological problem, joint pain for example, ask yourself, is it non-inflammatory or inflammatory? Because septic arthritis is an emergency. Non-inflammatory arthritis such as osteoarthritis, they do not have cardinal signs of inflammation, but inflammatory arthritis does. Inflammatory arthritis have asymmetric arthritis. For example, you wear out your left knee more than the right or faster than the right. Inflammatory has symmetrical arthritis both of your left and right knee are affected at the same time. Non-inflammatory arthritis, the pain is worse in the evening. Inflammatory arthritis, the pain is worse in the morning. And I've told you why in the previous video. Non-inflammatory arthritis, the ESR and CRP are within normal limits. In inflammatory arthritis, both ESR and CRP are elevated. I've talked about ANA in the previous video. In brief, they are O2 antibodies against the nucleus. It's only positive if the titer is greater than 1 to 80. For example, 1 over 60, over 160 is positive. 1 over 320 is positive. 1 to 640 is also positive, but 1 to 40 is negative. They are reported in titers. Patient with ANA positive and the titer is 1 to 640 has more serum antibodies than a patient with ANA positive and the titer is 1 to 320. The higher the titer, the more likely than not you have an autoimmune disease, but the higher the titer does not mean that the disease is more severe. It has nothing to do with disease activity or symptoms whatsoever. If ANA is positive, you should never repeat the test because there is nothing new to learn. Diseases with positive ANA, drug-induced lupus, systemic lupus, erythromatosis, mixed connective tissue disease, scleroderma, Jogren, dermatomyositis, polymyositis, and rheumatoid arthritis. One out of every nine of healthy women has positive ANA. So it doesn't mean anything when it's positive, but when it's negative, it can help rule out the disease because it has more sensitivity and less specificity. Here is a very important thing to remember forever. The best test to confirm the diagnosis of an inflamed joint is to aspire fluid from the joint called joint fluid aspiration or arthrocentesis. And then you send it to lab to get cells and then you do microscopic examination, light microscopy and plain polarized light. This is especially important in cases of gout and pseudo gout. I've talked about ESR in a previous video, so today just a quick review. Erythrocyte sedimentation rate. It's the rate at which erythrocytes sediment. Oh, really? I can't believe you. In physics, any rate is changing something over change in time. So time is always in the denominator. Same thing in ESR, the distance or length over change in time. That's why we report it in one hour and two hours, for example. Now it's performed using the automated analyzer. You don't have to measure it by yourself anymore. In my previous video on ESR, I made a very bad mistake, but my friend Jinzo in the comments told me about the mistake. He told me we measured the ESR from the top. The zero is in the top and not in the bottom. Thank you so much, my friend. You are the best and I apologize. So as time passes, the red blood cells will go down called sedimentation. So they go down and they go down and they go down until they rest in peace. And then you measure the distance from here to here reported in millimeters per hour. And then this is your ESR. Normal ESR values, if you are a dude less than 50 years old, should be less than 15 millimeters per hour. If you are a dudette less than 50 year old, you should have ESR of less than 20 millimeters per hour. As you grow older, everything gets worse. 
and the ESR is no exception. What are the factors that affect the sedimentation? We have pro-sedimentation factors and anti-sedimentation factors. Pro-sedimentation factors which increase sedimentation and increase the ESR, such as fibrinogen and immunoglobulins. Then the anti-sedimentation factors are the negative charges on the red blood cell surface. As you know, in physics, opposites attract, similars repel. These are the conditions that increase the ESR. These are the conditions that decrease the ESR. Increase ESR, inflammation and infection due to fibrinogen and IgG, anemia, macrocytosis, multiple myeloma and Wallenstrom macroglobulinemia. Conditions that decrease your ESR, hyperviscosity syndrome, polycythemia because you have more red blood cells, therefore you have more negative charges, therefore you have more repulsion force. Sickle cell because of decreased rollo, microcytosis, smaller is faster, spherocytosis, decreased rollo. Here we have multiple myeloma, they have increased rollo when they, like birds of feather, flock together. Same thing, when they stack together, they sink and sediment together, raising the ESR. ESR and CRP, we call them acute phase reactant. Actually, ESR is not an acute phase reactant. It's kind of a lab test. It's not something produced in your body. It's only produced in the lab. But let's keep it simple. They correlate with disease activity. For instance, if you have rheumatoid arthritis, your ESR is 130 millimeters per hour. It means your body is on fire. The higher the ESR, the more disease activity there is, the worse is it for you. They correlate with response to therapy. Let's say you had rheumatoid arthritis. ESR was 130. I'm giving you medicine because I'm awesome. And now your ESR dropped from 130 to 30 millimeters per hour. This is freaking awesome. It means you are improving and responding and the inflammation is decreasing. But ESR and CRP, they have no diagnostic value whatsoever. Just because your ESR and CRP are high doesn't mean you have RA. I cannot diagnose you based on ESR and CRP. As you have noticed in the previous slides, there are bazillion conditions that can raise ESR and million other conditions that can lower your ESR. So I cannot diagnose you based on these garbage tests. What if my ESR and CRP are extremely high? Think infection, malignancy or vasculitis. They are more sensitive than specific. What do you mean more sensitive? If ESR and CRP are normal, you don't have an acute inflammation. Very unlikely. But they are not specific. Why? Because if you have high ESR and CRP, doesn't mean you have rheumatoid arthritis. Could be otitis, encephalitis, urethritis, inflammatory arthritis, bronchitis, pneumonia, pleurisy, endocarditis, myocarditis, polycarditis, pancarditis, whatever. Now we know everything about ESR, let's talk about C-reactive protein. It's a protein, therefore it's synthesized in the liver. Oh, shocker. Synthesized in response to interleukin-6, which is produced by the white blood cells, especially like macrophages and stuff like that, as well as malignant cells. So cancer or inflammation will produce interleukin-6, simulate the liver to produce the C-reactive protein. When you see C-reactive protein high, it means your body is on fire. Why? Because interleukin-6 has to be high, and interleukin-6 is never fun when it's high. It means it's either infection or cancer. Also, inflammation will raise your ESR. That's why in inflammation you have high ESR and high CRP. Quiz time. Let's say that you had an acute inflammation and your ESR and CRP were very high. However, because I'm an awesome doctor, I treated you. I gave you medicine and you went back to normal. Which one should normalize first, the ESR or the CRP? Let me know down below in the comments. In the next video, we'll talk about acute phase reactants, the markers of inflammation. Make sure to subscribe. This medical channel is just awesome. I mean, come on, guys. If you'd like to get all of my Dropbox notes, go to patreon.com forward slash medicosis. I have many notes just for my patrons. Thanks for watching. And as always, be safe, stay happy and study hard. Medicosis Perfectionalis.